All right. Um, well, we'll maybe we'll talk after class, get you up to speed a little bit. Um, but for your information too, I'm taping this class and dynamics. So if you don't want to be caught on camera, don't come up here. The uh, for this homework set, I put up both chat, uh, both editions of the book, both the seventh and the eighth edition book. I just put them up there. You can do that. Some of you mixed and matched. Some of you, I don't know what you did. So you can, you can now check your problems, see if you did okay on them. All right? Any questions? Where are we? We still. Uh, let's see. There's, uh, we're still a bit away from the first exam, so we're okay. Any questions? Everybody, this is TJ. Right. right, that's what you go by, TJ. Yep. That's that's your, how you officially appeared. So is that your full official name? That is my full name. Yeah. We'll find out what it is. That's DJ. He's your little yeah. brother. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's what's D stand for. Uh, Dave. Oh, that's boring. I got nothing. <laughs> TJ didn't stand for anything. No, my parents wanted to be able to call me TJ, and then they never agreed. I want to stand for it. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, it always amazes me when people name a kid something and then immediately go to some nickname of that. Why didn't you just name him that in the first place? Oh, my, my brother is not Daniel, he's Dan, because that's what my folks wanted to call him. Yeah, my, that was the deal my dad wanted me to be named after him, and then my mom didn't like that name, so that was the deal. So, so are you Dave Jr.? Yeah. Is that why you're DJ? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, people will be able to track you because this is all on camera. All right, if you remember, we were working on, uh, on Tuesday on uh, strains. We come up with one, um, and like the stresses, there's more than just one, but all we had on Tuesday, what we come up with on Tuesday was what we call the normal strain. Oh, by the way, all the videos, I think, are up to date on uh, iTunes U. So, if you miss something, well, you guys are the ones that don't miss something. Well, you can. You can, you can catch up the entire semester. It'll only take you about eight hours to download. <laughs> and about how long it took me to upload. <laughs> to com I had to download them, compress them, then upload them. And all that took about four hours of class hours. So, good thing I had two days to do nothing. Clean the driveway. All right, we had the normal strain. Remember what that was? What was our symbol for normal strain? Epsilon. Huh? Epsilon. Epsilon. Actually, uh, I believe a lowercase epsilon defined as this is this is what we're finally doing here is actually looking at how these materials, these engineering materials, deform. So we're looking at deformation of these materials. Uh, for the most part, in an engineering sense, what we're looking at is elastic deformation. It's okay. It's, it's, it's not that it's okay that these things deform. It's that it's unavoidable. When things are under some kind of load, there's going to be some kind of deformation in these realistic materials, uh, in these real life materials that we're finally looking at. What uh, What is the... The design concern is that we uh, understand these deformations, allow for them, and then expect them to disappear when the load disappears, just like when we unload a spring, we expect it to go back to its rest length. That's kind of the thing we're expecting here, um, that these materials will respond to this load, respond predictably to this load, and then respond predict to predictably to the removal of that load. So this was our first real look at a, a material in deformation under load. Remember how it was defined from Tuesday? It's not in your notes? What'd you do on Tuesday? Huh? Del over L. Del being 
the amount of the deformation. In our simplest picture, we imagine some piece under some simple axial load, whether it's a, a tensile load, like I drew there, or a compressive load, doesn't really matter. What happens is, in tension, we expect a, an elongation of the material, and that will make then the strain positive. L being the original length. So it's the change in length over the original length, often, uh, often put as a, as a percentage. Um, if you look through some of the problems yet in this, or uh, if you remember the, the little bit we did on Tuesday, uh, these are very small numbers, on the order of 10 to the minus 6. So very, very small numbers. Um, as we're finding out, as we go through this stuff, we've really got to keep an eye on the uh, units anyway. So let's just do a warm-up problem. So here's uh, here's some kind of axial, some kind of uh, some kind of member under some axial strain, and we're going to look at two of the possible deformative responses of this. One, let's imagine, well, we don't have to imagine it does that it elongates by some measure, but since the volume is constant. Not only does it elongate, but it's going to narrow down a little bit. It is the very same thing when you uh, when you stretch a, a rubber band or something. If you look at it closely, if you stretch it enough, you'll see that not only does it get longer, but it also gets narrower. So we're going to look at this response, of course, exaggerated in this picture. Start with an original length of 500 millimeters. We have an elongation here of 300 micrometers. And an original diameter of 16 millimeters and a change in diameter Maybe I'll call that del sub d for the change in diameter. Uh, minus 2.4 micrometers. So in this case, we have actually two strains we need to look at. We need to look at the strain in the length direction, the axial direction but we also need to look at the strain across the diameter. So just as a warm-up, sort of get used to the numbers again that we're working with here. Uh, that's your warm-up problem. For you guys that didn't hear yet, I put the solutions from both edition sets up there. Remember, I don't grade these so much for specific content. You can check the results. It's uh, as much for, for uh, your ability to lay out a problem and a solution itself. Yeah, Pat, we may have to focus a little bit better. It seems you can see some of the numbers now. So, first couple days are a little sketchy. All right, easy numbers to work with. Uh, you need to keep track of the the magnitude of these things, but uh, also. And I kind of took care of it for you anyway. Take care of the 
the uh, the plus and the minus signs because we do have strain in two possible directions. We got to know which. See how tough this class is? Braids. Divide two numbers by two numbers. Uh, DJ GD actually has his calculator here today, so that's, that's, that's no trouble then. Do you agree? Everybody agree? You don't know? The, we got a, a, a little uh, terra cell over here and a little terra cell over here, and, and the, the gulf between. Mu is micro. Tends to be about the uh, the magnitude of these these type of numbers in the strain calculation. So everybody agreed that this little this little uh, conclave here and over here, this group's not talking to each other. You'll you'll sit together, but you won't actually communicate with each other. Jake's. Desperately trying to cross the goal, <laughs> trying to trying to reach out a hand. Bats have nothing to do with it. Way too early. Yeah. percent. What do we have on this one? Remember, there are a thousand different ways to present it. Your choice. So, Pat, what'd you do? Point zero six percent. 60%? 60%? If it was that long, it's now this long. 300 micrometers. Yeah, watch this stuff. This is this stuff is very, very sensitive to the, the magnitudes on these numbers. So six times ten to the negative fourth millimeters over millimeters. Is that the same thing you had? Well then, tomorrow, DJ, what do you got? So, a whole bunch of different ways to present that. 
one of, I guess, the accepted ways is just to say 600 microns, but uh, I think that agreed with what everybody said, the 6 times 10 to the minus 4. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a bit of a, it's a, well, it's a bit of a hangover, a uh, holdover. <laughs> Whoops. It's a bit of a holdover from the old days that generally try to keep the, the uh, powers on the 10 to multiples of 3. Um, that's where the best known uh, si SI prefixes are. It's a bit of a holdover from the years, the days when we used to use slide rules to calculate this stuff. Um, so rather than a six, ta six times 10 to the minus four, it's 600 times 10 to the minus six um, or 600 micros is generally a little bit more acceptable, though your number wasn't wrong. Uh, just to make communication with the old white men you're going to be working with when you actually get to an engineering firm, because that's what the vast overwhelming of, uh, percentage of them are, you'll be able to communicate with them. How about the strain in the diameter, diametral uh, direction? Jake? Uh, 1.5 times 10 to the negative 40. Uh, nope. I just want the answer. That's what you got. Negative. Want the answer? Negative. Boom! The new guy making friends fast. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, what do you have? Uh, nope. DJ. Is negative. Remember, we need to know what direction this goes in. One way to present it: negative 150 microns. All right. So, good start on uh, this simple division of one number by another. Takes me back to the days of teaching math 108. Working through that stuff with them. All right. That's just a, a review, a reminder for us. Now we'll look at the other type of strain that we look at in this class. Uh, again, like this one, uh, very, very much depends upon your ability just to see the geometry in the, uh, in the problem. So we'll start with a look at a simple uh, element of some type. Whether this is actually a, a piece of the material or represents um, the physical inscription of a small square on a material, which is one way that these type of strains are, are determined uh, for the, the purpose of illustration, we'll imagine that one side is uh, secured to some immovable object of some kind and that there's uh, some shearing force across the top. We'll give it a side, uh, a height of, of L there. The width is not a concern to us in this, uh, at least in the geometry shown, but the height of it is. The response of this then is for this element to deform in that way due to this shear stress. So this is called shear strain. What we're concerned with here is the response in an angular way. So uh, we'll again call that del, our book this orientation would tend to call that del x. So the shear strain then is defined as that's a lowercase gamma. This will be the average shear strain defined as that deformation over the original length. Essentially, what that is then is the uh, is the tangent of that angle that's formed.
for very, very small angles. And you can check this on your calculator if your calculator is set to radians. For very, very small angles, the tangent and the angle are the same. You set your calculator radians, put in a very, very, very small angle, take the tangent of that, you'll get essentially the very same number back, except for several, uh, several decimal places down the road. So it's an angular deformation, as you might expect from the response of the material to shear deformation. Um, if we if we look at the uh, limit as L approaches zero of this average shear, then we get the uh, the the, uh, the the precise shear at that angle. That can be more of a concern if we have a material that responds in a slightly different way than the applied shear. Uh, it could depend upon the material. It might even depend upon how the material is uh, fastened down where it might deform something like that where then we do have a different angle of the shear down here than we would have got we would have gotten if we'd taken the average. We're not going to concern ourselves too much with that kind of precise detail uh, since this is an introductory class into this. So there's there's I guess the notion sort of of a of an instantaneous shear just like we had when we developed the the uh, calculus of limits in the first place. All right, some of the some of the greater details of this. If you remember, also on Tuesday, we set up a look at the shear across an entire element. <coughs> determine that there could be shear stresses like that. Under that kind of load, the material will deform, again, in a highly exaggerated sketch, would deform something like that. Remember, uh, we're talking about very, very small deformations. We couldn't possibly sketch those. Bless you. So we're uh, we're very much concerned with uh, with the full picture here. So this is a a deformation, a change in a ninety degree angle in response to these. shear stresses, so it's the 90 degree angle then minus minus the shear that we're seeing back here. So if you think about the geometry a little bit, uh, if we brought this down so that these bottom two surfaces are the same, we pretty much have this same drawing here. So it's just, uh, in, in essence, a, a slightly different way than to, uh, to look at the uh, two different problems. Another possibility is that the shear stresses are in the other direction. then the response of the material is, uh, is uh, hard to draw. Yeah, it might do something like that under shear stresses in the other direction.
this will give us a positive shear stress response. This we consider a negative shear, shear stress response. But either way, they're, they're calculated in the same way. How you doing with your technical freehand sketching? Not right. too bad. Yeah. Colin, are you in that class where you're doing better? Yeah. More, more cognizant of what you're putting down? Yeah. A little bit? Okay. All right, so that's that's the setup for it um, for uh, for these problems. Again, it's an, uh, a lot of the problem is just a geometry problem. So we'll look at a, a couple simple setups, simple possibilities of, uh, of what we can do with these. All right, so let's imagine we have a thin plate of some, some rectangular size, 720 by 480 millimeters. In original unstressed dimension, and then due to some applied load, we get a response, again, of course, exaggerated, something like yikes. That's, that's, that's painful to see that one. All right, so I'm still not happy. exaggerated response of this to some shear stress. And you can see we have two places where we have the shear strain. So we need to look at the response here. Call that 0.5 millimeters, and the one down here. geometry problem, one of the things we're looking for is the total shear strain here.
as always in this class and your others be very careful with your units so we're talking about uh, angular changes here Jake's question is is it in radians my response was my usual Oh, that was your cell phone to calculate it, okay? It's got to be in it. Can you power it to the end? So is that better than DJ's phone? Oh, I can do that too. It's a lot different. I'm just going to switch. Yeah, you've been using these TI calculators since, what, about fourth grade? Seven. <laughs> I love the idea of buying a fourth grader a hundred dollar calculator. Yeah, I gotta be careful with some tape. I'll edit it out. I have to keep my editorial comments and my death threats to a minimum.
coordinates on here. It's not too terrifically important here. So put the 0.5 millimeters over there, and then the discussion at the back here was which goes under it. What did you finally decide? What goes under that 0.5? Seven twenty, but where were the units? <clears throat> if nothing else, just keep the units the same between the two, and you'll be okay. And they'll just cancel, and you'll left over whatever number you're left over. What we get for that one is positive. In this case, yeah. What's that come out to be? 694 micros. Or micrometers per meter. Or uh, what are one of the other 25 different ways you could have looked at it? Sigma 2, or uh, gamma 2, the shear strain in the other direction. Uh, put subscripts on. I guess that would be LY and LX like that, eh? And what to put for that one? Do you guys agree on that one too? Finally? Who was right and who was wrong? What? He was right and wrong? Is this uh, positive or negative? This one's also positive. By convention. And so the strain in that direction then was 521 micros. And then the total strain was the sum of those two, which is what? 12, 15? An angular deformation. Uh, your question was uh, units radians? Yeah. Uh, if you put it in degrees, which you could, I guess, no reason not to, but uh, that's, uh, there's no reason to, uh, since this is sufficient for, for what's uh, understood for the strength, the, the shear strength. All right. I'm already tired. solid days of clearing my driveway since nobody came down for extra credit to help. Only a mile away. Like you don't. It's in the sheriff file. I think the sheriff knows exactly which one of you knows where I live and which one doesn't. Alright. What? On the tape back. <laughs> no sweat. I know exactly what you said. No, on, on that one we did have that that uh, if we wanted that angle, yeah, you subtract it from pi over two. Oh, you just wanted the total of the other ones. That's why. Okay. You wanted the the the, uh, the total shear. It's it's a I don't know. I find this a little bit confusing. I don't like. You know, I don't. This is not my my engineering background in this field, so um, I find it a little bit confusing that all the different ways they, they report some of this stuff. So, I don't know, sometimes it just seems like a game. 
All right, so it's Friday, so let's do a get out of class question. There's the uh, original shape. It's a square 10 inches on a side. And it's original unstressed form. When stressed, the response is call that the x and the y direction. The response is something like this. Well, you, you can you can do an entirely different problem if you'd like. So the response, of course, exaggerated, is something like that. All right, this. those strains and we'll call this end down here also find sigma p, uh, gamma p. Was that some scoop set? Edge. Oh. Along, along one of the edges. Shows up perfectly on the camera. All I have to do is zoom in on it. All right. First person to get that gets a million bucks. Anybody who gets it before the end of class gets to leave early. Keep an 
this million bucks. Frank, not quite right. Not quite right. Pat? Yeah. <laughs> covered it. I know I'm going to be doing it. Right? What's this number? That's 0.2 divided by 8.5. Good idea. I would check it if I were you, but you got the right idea. Just check your numbers. type of thing, the original length of an edge is 10 inches. The new length of an edge is whatever this full diagonal length is. So you're going to have to do a little Pythagorean theoreming to come up with that. Those are the three normal stresses. What was that? Uh, 
What's the new length of the edge? Now you've doubled it. Oh yeah, you don't want to double that one. It made sense to double the other ones if you wanted to, but this one, the 10 inches, isn't actually doubled. It's a single, a single length. So you have to take this decreased length over that increased length yeah, of the Pythagorean the theorem. Yeah, there's not 11. What am I looking? Am I looking at the wrong number? Yeah, but remember, you don't want the original, or you don't want the new length here. You want the change. Right, yeah, and then minus yeah. the 10, right? Would that be Yeah, minus 10. So 1.32. Well, that's not what I got. Yeah, that's what I got. I got 0 0.066. struggle with the uh, seven degree geometry. That's the Thagorean's theorem, right? Oh, oops. I didn't lost two inches. Oh, I didn't put one to the Ow. Okay. Geometry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's, that's just stuff to work out right at the end now. So, uh, Let's at least lay out how you're going to find the shear strain. Remember this new angle across here is called theta p. That's pi over 2 minus the shear strain we're looking for. So this is pi over 2, the original 90 degree angle, minus whatever that angle is, and you can figure that out from the geometry you're given. So that, that number there then is your ticket back into class on Monday. Yeah. No. No, we're looking more like micro RAS. Well, hang on, let me see. No. Well, we're, that's still pretty darn big by, by a factor of uh, 100 or something. <laughs>